is Renat Zerbele for InnoMind.org. Uh, we are at the Armory Show 2015, and I'm talking to Brian Bress, who is a, uh, I can't really frame, I mean, it, he's a com contemporary artist, but he doesn't create these works digitally. Uh, let me talk to him and we'll find out. How are you, Brian? I'm doing well, thank you very much. Thanks for the interest. Um, Tell so me a little bit about your work, how you started, how long you've been doing it, and uh, how do you make these? Right, so these particular bodies of work are, um, they're all analog videos, they're shot, um, there's no digital manipulation, and there's actually very little editing. What you're looking at right here are costumes that I've made, and um, I've, I'm cutting out wood, with a saw from behind in these costumes. So they're all, in the film industry, they call them practical effects versus digital effects. So everything that you see, or see here, you would have seen in camera or in the studio if you were watching it. Um, and what I'm interested in is sort of trying to document uh, the process of making art, the process of watching the drawing evolve, um, and then also um, playing with the, the sort of, the potential to have a conversation with art history and with the history of painting. Um, this particular piece is um, based off of a um, Solowit drawing. It's actually up at the Met right now, mm -hmm. called 370. Your and pieces? No, they're oh. Solowit, they're, it's a Solowit oh. wall drawing. Okay. And the Solowit wall drawing, if you've ever seen it, there's horizontal stripes and vertical stripes and then these sort of uh, geometric shapes. And I was Do they thinking, intercept at all? They, yeah, they sort of butt up against one another along this long hallway, and I believe there's 10 total of them, and I could be wrong on that number. Is that the inspiration? That's the inspiration for this piece, and I wanted to make, so the title of the piece is 370 Cover. I mean, musicians are often doing covers of songs where, you know, uh, Bob Dylan will cover a Johnny Cash song, or, mm -hmm. you know, and I love this idea of being able to take a piece like it was a song, because often there's just instructions for a solo it, drawing and then people execute them and I love the idea of being able to take sort of instructions for an artwork and cover it like it was a song and then put your own like twist on it and mm -hmm. you know so how I would make that image or how I would even attempt to make that image was where I where it it started to become how I would it, it, it interpret it and, and that's the interesting part for me right do you consider yourself contemporary artist uh, I consider everybody making art right now a contemporary artist even if they're making you, you know, works that look like Renaissance paintings because right. it, it, yeah, even if they're, yeah, working in, you know, super realist painter, I consider them a, because it's different to make realistic paintings now than, it, even if you're making identical paintings 300 years ago, it means something different to make them now. I see. Do you believe art education for an artist is important or he can exist in the vacuum basically just, you know, visualizing ideas in his imagination, his or her, and then basically putting it out into this world without even knowing what was done before? Uh, I think that it's important for some artists, depending on the kind of art they make, but there's a lot of artists who are outsider artists or who make work that doesn't necessarily um, need to be in dialogue with the whole you know, art contemporary scene. art scene. They're just they're on their own. It's like they're on their own planet and they're making amazing stuff and you're just watching their imagination go wild. If you, you know, like a Henry Darger, like, I, I doubt he was, you know, super familiar with, you know, the art of his day, but he made amazing drawings. So, Who's a living artist that inspires you the most today? Oh, that, the one living artist that inspires me the most today? Um, you know, I think... Uh, can it be somebody who just recently passed away? I think Mike Kelly was, you know, amazing, and he was totally an inspiration. Um, you know, he was just brilliant, and I think there's a generation of artists who owe a lot to him. I see. Yeah. Now, let's segue to the format, the form factor. Why vertical, and are they, is this one piece, or is it actually, you know, separately yeah, it's sold? One, it's one piece. It's a, a six-panel synchronized piece. The reason that they are... Uh, vertical is because I, I'm, they're portraits. So historically, a portrait is like this. You know, if they were a landscape or whatever, I would have turned them this way. But a lot of these are portraits, so I put them in portrait. So I noticed there is similar to your work, but I, I'm guessing that is uh, that's yours too. Those are also my pieces. Yeah. So those and are single panel pieces. Can you talk a little bit about your yeah, sure. pieces over there? Yeah. Uh, so the first one you're looking at right here is a. 
Um, it's titled uh, Kelly Drawing Brit, and Brit is my wife. Mm. And this is a drawing of her without her face and her any of her skin. And what I did is I painted uh, paint on glass, and then I gave uh, instructions to an artist who works for me mm. to make a drawing like this on the back of the glass. And so in one take, and I painted her white, so as she draws, and etches into glass, she reveals herself, a different face, and then and then sort of makes a new drawing where the face would be. Sort of similar to those, you sort of watch an abstraction, right, 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 right. do something. Layering, or, yeah. Right? I see. Right, so that's what's sort of going on in this piece. And it's, so right, that white is the background there, and you can see her moving sort of behind there. And as she draws, she, re she reveals these sort of lines that create uh, an analog kind of um, halftone effect, but this is again not digital. I see. Yeah. Does that mean the the face has no personality? The fact that it's not fe there's no features. It's all triangles and edginess. And I mean, what's your take on it? Like, how do you? Well, look at it? I'm always what I'm really interested in that as humans, we're given a minimal. Um, it's our, by our nature to try to see a face in everything. Like in nature, we right, walk right, around right. We and you'll see two. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's it built into yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. And I love playing with that minimal amount that needs to be like a face. Like, is that enough? Is is that a brow? Yeah. Is that a nose? Is it a beak? And so I want something. I want to replace with the face with other with an abstraction that then because of its context, you. It, it just pushes and pulls between abstraction and, and the face and a portrait. I see. Yeah. Let's move on to this particular one. I sure. really like this one. Oh, and thank you. at first I thought it was 3D animated, but it's not, is it? No, this is another costume <laughs> you, that you I built. You stay away from anything digital, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean... Except, except the video. Like, you are a video artist if you really look at it, right? I mean, if... Would you... I use video as a container to show paintings and sculptures that I make. And in this one, it's a piece of glass, and I'm making a blind drawing on glass. So I can't see out of the costume. Okay. So the costume is foam and latex and paint. And then uh, throughout the process of the take, it's one take, and I make a series of maybe about 10 drawings. The last one being a sort of, the character doing a self-portrait of himself, and that's what's happening at By the memory. end here. By memory, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. And, right. and so- and How do you call this one? Uh, this one is called Mop Top, for obvious reasons. All He's right, uh, I guess my last question, what is art to you? What is art to me? Um, art is the opportunity to um, excite people and make them ask questions, ask new questions of yourself. And if and there was no art, what would be in this world? Um, it would be. It would feel really sad and really empty. I mean, um, I can't imagine a world without it.